Hello, this is Eric Braden. You're listening to TV Confidential. <laughs> Ed Robertson, along with our guest David Starzik. David plays Richard Casablancas on Veronica Mars. Season four of Veronica Mars is now available on Hulu. David's other notable television credits include Perfect Citizen, Noah Wiley, and the famous episode of Hot in Cleveland that marked Mary Tyler Moore's final appearance as an actress. He can also be seen in The Affair on Showtime. You can follow David on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash David Starzik. Fan page, David. Before we went to break, you were telling our listeners how, even though you have worked on many television shows throughout your career as an actor, you have never lost your excitement as an actor, and that there have been moments, such as the time you met Mary Tyler Moore on the set of Hot in Cleveland, where you realized, "Oh my God, I'm working with Mary Tyler Moore. Oh my God, I'm working." With Betty White. Now, I'm guessing, I mean, I'm not an actor. I'm, I'm a guy who talks to actors on the radio. But I'm guessing, David, that for you as an actor, it has to be inspiring to work with someone like a Betty White who has been acting professionally for seven plus decades and yet still has a joy and passion and brings a newness to everything she does, like she's doing it for the and first time. And, and is so kind and so fun and, you know, and also, by the way, it doesn't hurt to see someone who's 90 years old living on red vines and hot dogs and Coke. <laughs> really, that's really what she eats. It, it, was, it was just, I'm like, wow, this, you know, so all the diet stuff may be out the window. But, you know, she, I had so much fun with her. She, she said one of my favorite things extemporaneously anybody's ever said. Uh, when I brought my wife to the set. I brought, uh, brought Kim downstairs, and I said, oh, Betty, I want you to meet my wife. And without missing a beat, she said, you're married? I wouldn't have done that with you if I'd known you were married. <laughs> so quick. It was so fast. It was so funny. You know, and, and to, yeah, and sure, of course, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of The Odd Couple, for instance, uh-huh. the, the movie and the TV series. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, she's in a great episode of The Odd Couple. She's... And, and she was just so willing to talk about, you know, anything and, 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 and everything and generous and funny and, and you know, and, and also, by the way, it is absolutely an inspiration to see somebody who's uh, older, who is, you know, not just, not just with it, but like really with it and really able and really uh, wonderful. You know, you, it, it gives you something to work towards. When Jack Klugman did our program many, many years ago, David, uh, we talked about The Odd Couple, and he said the episode of Password that Betty uh, Betty White and Alan Ludden did, he said that was his favorite episode of, of The Odd Couple. So it was such a good one. Actually, you know, Klugman, now to go, let's, let's go back to something I just said because that's an interesting thing. I did a play at Gary Marshall's Theater mm-hmm. uh, almost to be like 15, 18 years ago now. Mm-hmm. Uh, over there in Toluca Lake. Mm-hmm. And um, so one of the perks of doing a play is you get in for the rest of the season, you can come and see the rest of the plays for the rest of the year. And Klugman did a one-man show. And they said, oh, you know, come, come on, you know, we'll come backstage and we'll meet him. And I was so intimidated, not because he was an intimidating fellow, but because I had been watching him since I was a child, mm-hmm. I couldn't bring myself to do it. And I've regretted it ever since. I've regretted it for the, forever and ever. I've just been thinking, why didn't I go? Why didn't I, you know, just come up and say hello to him at least for a minute? Because he really was one of my idols. I mean, I just loved everything he did, you know, the movies, and he was great as Quincy, and he was great as, as Oscar. I mean, he's just, and, you know, and also talk about, an inspiration. I mean, somebody who continued to act after he lost half of his uh, voice box. For- yeah, reinvented himself in a lot of respects. And absolutely did. Yeah, yeah. absolutely did. And and you know, and didn't give up. And, and wrote a. I don't know if you got a chance to read his book. Uh, Tony and Me. Yeah, it's a beautiful book. Love that book. It's a great, it, beautiful it's book. Very much, so, and it's it's all about Tony Randall's. It's really all about Tony Randall. And yep. and and I think in another way too, the one of the things that I took from it. And it was a very important thing for everybody to understand is that, you know, time is fleeting. And if you have a friend, if you have a family member, if you have whatever, you can't take for granted that they're going to be there forever. And I think, you know, after Randall died, I think Krugman realized uh, 
what a great friend he had been to him. And he, I mean, that book is a love letter to Randall. It's, it's just talking about, you know, how not just how easy he was to work with and all that, but also how encouraging he was when Klugman went through all that, all that, the horrors of, you know, losing. I mean, imagine you're an actor and you lose half of your voice box for crying out loud. It's, it's, that's got to be cowing. That's got to be something that's so frightening. And, and, you know, Randall was so supportive. He, you know, he said Randall's the one that called him and said, no, we're doing that couple. We're doing it on Broadway and we're going to raise money for my theater project and that's it. You're going to come do it and you're not saying no. Yeah, and I think the lesson was that, you know, you don't have forever and, and you have to grab onto the people that you love and the people that are important to you and let them know it because, you know, they may not be here tomorrow. You just don't know. Very, very much so. Our time is fleeting with you. Uh, David Starzik, David Starzik, Richard Casablancas on Veronica Mars. Season four of Veronica Mars now airs on Hulu. You can follow David on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash David Starzik fan page. David also mentioned that uh, he will be seen in the Showtime series The Affair. What can you tell us about your appearance in The Affair? Well, my appearance in The Affair was great because I had done a movie called The Perfect Guy um, that, of course, I ended up. I had a like a three page speech and it ended up being cut down to about twelve seconds, but that's okay. I don't really care, you know, whatever, it's fine. But um, But it's the best but, it's the best twelve seconds of that production. There you go. The best twelve seconds of that film. <laughs> and um uh Samal Lathan was the lead, was the female lead in that movie. And so I had worked with her before. Um so when I showed up to do the affair there was a familiarity anyway with her. I had already been with her for um, you know, a few days. Uh, the year or a couple of years prior, so um, it was nice. I played kind of a uh, the guy was kind of a racist. Um, he he was the head of the PTA, and he was basically telling her that she's not going to be the principal; she's going to be a co-principal, and didn't want her going out in public. Wanted her just to do her job as uh, nuts and bolts of the job, and let somebody else be the public face of the school and. There was a hint of racism in it, which uh, never makes me comfortable. But, yeah. um, but you know, I did it anyway. And uh, you know, she was just very wonderful to work with and lovely, and 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 everybody there was terrific. And the only thing about it was that it, uh, we shot it at Hamilton High School, and my um, my younger son went to uh, Laces, Los Angeles Center for Enriched Studies, and mm-hmm. he was a pitcher. And we never beat Hamilton the entire time we were there. So I don't even like going to Hamilton. <laughs> I don't like to drive by there because takes me off because I'm a kid. So we had to shoot in the school, and I was walking around going, oh, I hate this place. But, you know, I mean, that is what it is. That's just sour grapes on my part. <laughs> thinking aloud here, but I might be thinking of another school. Hamilton High School, that was the front that was used uh, for Mr. Novak, among other TV shows. I think that's right. Yeah, yeah it's over on uh, Robertson. It's Robertson and, like, around National. Yeah. Um, and we're by the entrance to the 10 there at the, at the end of Robertson. Yeah, and in fact, I might be wrong, but I think it was also it, it, it was also used as the front of the courthouse when David Jansen got exonerated in the final episode of The Future. I think you are right about that, actually. Yeah. I think you're right about that. You know, I love stuff like that. Let me, can I just tell you one more? I know, I know we're running out of time, but I want to tell you a really, really cool sure. little, little story. Sure. Okay, so I did an episode of SWAT, and we shot it in Pasadena. Mm-hmm. And... I'm very familiar with, with Pasadena. Um, I worked in a restaurant out there when I was younger, and I've got very good friends that live out there, and et cetera, et cetera. So we go, and we're, we're shooting in this house, and, and I'm standing in the house, and I'm thinking, my God, I've seen this house before. So I said, why does this house look so familiar? And somebody says, well, they use the exterior as the governor's mansion in Benson. Uh-huh. And I said, no, that's not it. I said, something came in my mind. And I dismissed it. I said, is this the house that John Cassavetes lived in when he did that episode of Columbo? Is this that house? Because it sure looks like it. And then I thought, now, there's a million and three houses in Los Angeles. Yeah. How could I possibly be standing in that house? This is stupid. I'm, I, it's dumb. But I went home that night, and I have it recorded, and I put it on, and sure enough, <laughs> the same furniture, though, the same furniture yeah. from 1972 1973, the same, you know, rooms and, and, and everywhere all over the house, the backyard. I mean, the house is in a little bit of disrepair now on the outside. Mm-hmm. Um, in those days, it was much, much nicer. But, but you know, the interior is exactly the same wallpaper, yeah. same wall sconces. Everything was the same. And I'm thinking, my God, standing in the middle of this, where Peter Falk and, and, 
and John Cassavetti is, you know, did their thing here at the bottom of these stairs, and I was standing on the stairs. It was just such a, such a trip, you know, such a, uh, just, I love stuff like that. I just love stuff like that. I just, I work very odd hours, and so sometimes late at night, um, I will decompress, and I will, wa- I will turn on my fire stick, and I will binge watch something either on IMDb or Hulu or Netflix, you know. Uh, and, and recently, I discovered that they added the second and third seasons of Columbo. So I just watched the one with John Cassavetes for the first time in like 15 years, and it still holds up. That's a, that's a great episode, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I, I love I love the fact that he drops the flower, and that's how they figure it out. <laughs> Very much so. So he figures out that he's wearing the flower. But you know, but okay. So so you know what I'm talking about? The house that he's in in the beginning, mm-hmm. and then later on. He he um when when Peter Falk comes and he basically does that whole bit with him, he's like, How much did the house cost? <laughs> what money do you make? How much how much how much help do you have? Yeah. Trying to show just how much he had to lose if he got caught exactly. on his wife and all that stuff, you know? But I was right there on those stairs and it's the the piano is still there. Mm-hmm. The, the, the 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 desk, everything is the same. And it was just so trippy that first of all it was trippy that I recognized it. Yeah. Second of all, it's just wild to know that you're, I mean, one of the things I love about, for instance, you know, for lack of a better example, one of the things I love about going to Warner Brothers is you feel like you're walking through the gate, well, Humphrey Bogart was there, and Mm -hmm. Errol Flynn was there, Mm -hmm. and Richard Burton was there, Mm -hmm. and and James Cagney was there, and Betty Davis, and and Joan Crawford. I mean, it's just, you, you have such a sense, there's such a through line of the history of what's been going on here this whole time. To have that as an actor is so important, you know, and I really hope that um, the younger folks appreciate that because it's, that's, that's a big part of what it is that we do. There's, you know, I always like to say that I'm kind of carrying the ball for however long they let me carry it or whenever they do let me carry it, I try to carry it as well as I can um, because I'm carrying along a tradition that started with silent movies. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a big star or anything, but you know, I work and, um, and to have that, just to, to be part of that legacy is an honor, really. It's well, really, really an honor. Well, and as you say, you work, and you have continued to work pretty steadily for three, four decades. And I've talked to enough actors that I can say this with confidence, David. That is what every actor really wants, what, you know, no matter no, you know, whether they're a quote-unquote star or a character actor or a working actor. They want to work. And they want to continue sure. to work as much as they can. So you have the best of all worlds. Well, let's. I'm going to knock on wood again and let us hope it continues. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I hope we'll have a chance to chat with you again one of these days on TV Confidential. Well, and you know what? I really, really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to call me and talk to me, too. It was very, very sweet of you, and I, I appreciate it very much. Season four of Veronica Mars airs on. Hulu, you can follow David Starzik on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash David Starzik fan page. We'll be back with more TV Confidential right after this. Accredited by Guinness World Records, welcome to Archival Television Audio Incorporated. A peerless TV soundtrack archive preserving the audio from television's first three decades, the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, the golden and silver age of television. For more information, go to atbaudio.com. Become a TV Confidential confidant and receive unlimited access to the last five years of TV Confidential, plus other members-only content. For more information, go to televisionconfidential.com slash join. We're Biffle and Schuster. How do you do? That's right, folks. We're Biffle and Schuster. We want to tell you about this amazing misadventures of Biffle and Schuster. It's a DVD from Pete Lover, and you're going to love it. We're Biffle and Schuster. It's terrific. Yeah, you know what uh, Joe Dante says about them? What does he say? He says, forehead slapping funny. What impresses is the dogged authenticity to the era, which makes it all the more hilarious. Absolutely. Accent on the high. We're Biffle and Schuster, as you can see. No one else can make that statement louder than we. They say we're soporific and it's probably we. We're Biffle and Schuster, oh, we're Biffle and Schuster. No, no, we're Biffle and Schuster. B-I-F-F-L, Biffle, S-H-W-Uster, Schuster. Biffle and Schuster, need we say more? 
available wherever DVDs are sold through our friends at Kino Lorber. All right, you loafers, get back to work. What am I paying you for? Why is he yelling at his shoes? Hi, this is Constance Towers, and welcome to TV Confidential. Alexa users, you can now listen to TV Confidential on your smart speaker by just saying, Alexa, play TV Confidential. Enabling our Alexa skill is easy. To find out how, go to televisionconfidential.com slash Alexa. This portion of TV Confidential is sponsored by Uber. Enter the promo code TV Confidential, all one word, when you download the app at get.uber.com slash go slash TV Confidential, and you'll receive a free first ride up to $20. You can now listen to TV Confidential whenever you want by downloading the new TV Confidential app. You can find the TV Confidential app at the Apple Store, apps.apple.com. Hi, this is Marion Ross. You are listening to TV Confidential. And Robert, with a reminder that the next edition of TV Confidential will premiere next week on the station at the usual time. We will play part two of our conversation with Donna Mills. Plus, we will welcome back James Dumont of HBO's The Righteous Gemstone. We hope you'll join us for that. In the meantime, got a few minutes, enough time to tell you that the holidays are upon us, and there is nothing more joyful and heartwarming than the familiar songs of the Yuletide season, many of which you will hear on A Classic Christmas. A Classic Christmas, a brand new special hosted by Gavin McLeod and Marion Ross that premieres Saturday, November 16th on most PBS stations with replays throughout November and well into December. The latest edition of the popular My Music series a classic christmas features rare archival footage of top music stars from the 50s through the 1970s all performing traditional carols such as silent night popular standards such as white christmas children's tunes such as rudolph the red-nosed reindeer plus the christmas song winter wonderland and other romantic selections among the great artists you will see in a classic christmas are bing crosby Perry Como, Judy Garland, Nat King Cole, The Carpenters, Andy Williams, Rosemary Clooney, Johnny Mathis, Gene Autry, The Drifters, and in an all-new performance, Ronnie Spector. A Classic Christmas, hosted by Gavin McLeod and Marion Ross. A Classic Christmas premieres Saturday, November 16th on most PBS stations. It will also be replayed throughout November and well into December. Check your local PBS listings for time. Season 4 of Veronica Mars airs on Hulu. You can follow David Starzik on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash David Starzik fan page. Carol the Bells will become available soon for streaming on demand just in time for the holidays. Well, Turnover becomes available on DVD beginning in December. All new episodes of Mood Swings premieres Thursdays on Pure. Follow Donna Mills on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as at DonnaMills.com. That'll do it for our program this week, folks. Ed Robertson, Rafa, Tony Figueroa, Donna Allen, Phil, Grace Greek, Air Barner producer, Chris Corman. Thank you so much for listening. We'll talk to you next time on TV Confidential. You can now listen to TV Confidential whenever you want by downloading the new TV Confidential app. You can find the TV Confidential app at the Apple Store, apps.apple.com.